So I was asked for the second time to MC the Taste for Equity event. Mm -hmm. This time it was going to be a little different. It was going to be outdoors, whereas back in 2019, it was in the Portland Art Museum. And after a year hiatus due to the pandemic in 2020, we are back yeah. at the Red Taste for Equity. Uh, they want to be the premier food and beverage equity celebration in the entire state of Oregon. And I think that they have succeeded so <laughs> far. I got connected with Taste when Joth Ricky, president of Dutch Bros, reached out to me and said he wanted to create this event in partnership with Kali Thorn Ladd, who was also a co-creator. I had never met either one of them prior mm -hmm. to this uh, initial outreach. There are four organizations each year that are beneficiaries of money that has already been pre-raised yeah. before the event. The four organizations who were the beneficiaries this year were the Native American Youth and Family Center, mm -hmm. Kairos PDX, Seating Justice, and Latino Network. Mm -hmm. So all four of them, they got a grant headed their way to continue in the work that they've been doing. There are booths set up all around the perimeter with food, drinks, that are all the groups that are being celebrated mm -hmm. that are and that, information yes yes the groups. and then there's tables in the middle and then in the very center is the stage we go from booth to booth being able to get tastings of all the wine all the food you can we can go back for as much as we want for different places that we like and it's just set up in a very like inviting yeah, it feels Wait. like a party. It feels yeah. like a, a gathering, a get together. There are a lot of people that are just all in the same mindset of wanting equity, pushing for equity, pushing for making the Portland area a better place. Yeah. I didn't know that justice fighting and fighting for others so I could have a space for myself, I didn't know everybody didn't do that. Because my parents told me to those who much is given, much is expected. They also told us Never forget who you are and whose you are. When Sharon got up there, Sharon, the winner of the Impact Award, mm -hmm. she stole the show. Yeah. That woman just went up on that stage and rocked the whole event. She did. She had everybody's she did. attention. I stand on the shoulders of all of those known and no unknown freedom fighters who were willing to take a chance to make community for all of us. That's Good. what the event is about. And I continue to fight because I really want to be in a world where there's space for me and you. Take up justice. It is a fabulous fight. You never age out of it. Like, yeah. that's what, when I sat down with Josh in 2019 and he told me about this event, it's about really celebrating and honoring and soaking up the people that are doing the work in the Every day. Yeah. That's what I really like about Taste, how you actually get an award. It's like an yeah. award show for being a pillar of the community and being someone who brings equity and equality and honoring that in the community. And it's like, oh, here's your award for it. Yeah. With that, it is time to eat. Taste PDX, it's time to taste now. So the food was really good at taste. Mm -hmm. It was awesome to be able to try lots of different things at these booths from some of the best chefs in the Portland area. Yes, and we are good. both, maybe to a fault, creatures of habit with the food we like and going to only certain restaurants because we know we like the food there. It was nice to be able to go to different booths and try different foods and try different combinations of things that otherwise we probably wouldn't have tried. Yeah. So that was really that was good. Nice. Yeah. The food was good, but the dessert was even better. Woo! The Marionberry Cheesecake Ice Cream Bar. Ice Cream Bar. Ice Cream Bar. Oh my gosh. All the cheesecake stuff. Yeah. There were a few different cheesecake yeah. things, but yeah, the bar. That was I don't know how that we, was special. I don't know how we limited that to I one. I don't know. I had a Pinot Noir and it was fantastic. And you loved it too. I did love it too. That's our favorite. And I never know the wines I drink because I'm relatively new. I just don't remember the names of any of them. That's why yeah. there's sometimes I can be on a road trip with the Blazers <laughs> yes. and be at a restaurant and, I get a and we're gonna get wine and I have to text her to ask her which one do I like. Lamar's emceed so many things and been host of so many things over the years and I enjoy it every time. That's what we're rolling with. Welcome everybody to Taste for Equity, Oregon's premier food beverage equity celebration. Y'all give it up for that alone. The fact that we have that here 
in our hometown. With someone who deals more with having more of an anxious mind, seeing how just free he is when he does these types of things is so great. And taste is probably one of the most special ones that he does because he is so like-minded with the idea of wanting to bring equity. Well, that's the kind of event like, it's not about the host or the MC. It's about all the people we're honoring. Yeah. So I try to find that balance of say enough to just keep people engaged, but mm -hmm. don't say so much that at any point it even slightly becomes about me in any kind of way. So that's what I try to go for with that. You did a good job. DJ Skinny Miracles, ready to turn up. You got it, it's on you. So the story of how we met is one of my favorite stories. In the spring of 2012, my youngest brother, Isaiah, was a fifth grader. He played basketball and wanted to do like a spring league. So he had his practices and he came home after the practices and talked about how much he loved his coach. Uh, after like a week or so of practice, he had his first game and the, all the games were on Sundays. They were at the Hoop in Beaverton. Walked in, sat down next to my mom on the bleachers, and I see them start playing. I might have been late. I don't know if the game had already started. I saw him, and I looked over to my mom. So right now you're my mom. Okay. And I was like, Mom. Yes. Who is that? That's the coach. Does he have a kid on the team? No. No, she said, oh. no, I don't think so. I think he just coaches. And okay, I was well, like, do... okay. No, I don't think so. I think, she... I think he just coaches. And I was like, Oh, okay. And now this is Sweetie, me. calm down. What's me. wrong with you? <laughs> she didn't Are do you it. overheating? She didn't do it. You need that to calm down. <laughs> that didn't happen. Oh, okay. Happen. I thought, okay. No, I played it cool. Okay. I didn't need my mom to know that I was into you like okay. that. Okay, all right. So I couldn't tell you what happened in that game. I was watching the coach the whole time. I didn't realize that that's how she was feeling because I didn't see you really look in my direction at all. And I spotted her before she spotted me. So I saw you from the moment you walked into the gym. The game ended and I didn't drive with my mom. I drove separately. So I could have just left right when the game was over. And that's what in a normal circumstance I would have done. But my mom hadn't met Lamar yet. There have been some practices, but yeah, my just mom, emails. yeah, she hadn't met you in person. And she was like, I want to wait. I'm going to stay after because I want to meet Lamar and introduce myself. And I was like, yeah, um, I should just do that too. I should probably, yeah, I'll just hang out here. <laughs> With you and I'm sure was probably like, what? You're Isaiah's sister. Why would you need to introduce yourself? She didn't say anything like that though. So then we go home and games are every Sunday. Yep. So like I'm excited for the next Sunday. First of all, I already love coaching the kids, but then it's also like I gotta find out, I gotta see Isaiah's sister. And I'm Because that's excited. her name, Isaiah's sister. Yeah, it's not that's what he I don't know her name yet. That's what my I still call her is. Isaiah's sister yes, now. He calls like, me that every day. Almost every day. Isaiah's sister. I was excited every Sunday and I would get all dressed up every week and I would plan out my outfits of what am I gonna wear and Sunday was the best day because then I would get all dressed up and but try to make not like dressed up, dressed up, but enough, but it's like at a game and it would like I would try to look cute every week hoping that you would notice me and talk to me and I never saw you look at I me. I can't give it away. I would either call my mom or she would call me every like Sunday morning and tell me the times, oh, Isaiah's games, or text me, Isaiah's games are at three and six today or whatever. So Sunday morning, I call her at like noon and I was like, I remember this vividly. And I said, mom, okay, hi mom, uh, when are the games this week? And she's like, oh, sweetie, they were early this week. They, we just got done with them. And I was like, oh, okay. And I cried, physical <laughs> tears, real tears came down my face. And that's when I was like, oh my gosh, I have to wait another week to see him. And I was so sad. So then she missed the game. I reached out to her on Facebook and said, I joked with you like how I was just telling Isaiah how supportive his family is, but then you go out and miss the game. Then I say, as clear as day, if you ever need to know the schedule, you can reach out to me. Bam. No, Door that's just you being nice, saying you're gonna, you'll give me the schedule. That's not, I didn't take it as, oh, you like me. Okay, I didn't say it verbatim. Like, I put some stuff in there where you knew like. I didn't, okay. I didn't know. Okay, so thank you, that all right? I can't be telling everybody okay. all our business. Yes, I didn't get all it. All right, but you, I, I let you know yes. that I was the one. And she did not reach out. So then, now I'm thinking, this doesn't sound like somebody that cried because they couldn't make it to the gym. Okay, That's and then what happened? 
I don't remember. Then the season ended. We went through all the games. And then you sent me a message at the, one of the last games saying that a different guy wanted my phone number. Oh, yeah, that's right. The, the guy at the hoop. And you were like, I'm sorry. Right. I, or I get, he might friend request you or something, so I'm sorry if that happens. And Did then he that, ever do it? No. Oh. And then that started us talking, and we talked like through that entire night till that like is. 2 in the morning just through direct messages on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And then in the last message, you said, here's my number. Can I have yours, please? With like seven E's in it. That's when I knew he liked me. Why are you putting extra on it? <laughs> what? And then we've been together ever since. Wait, what's huh? with seven E's? I didn't know seven was... E's. And so then we ended up getting engaged in 2016. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we knew we wanted to get married right away. It was a few just months a later. few we- weeks later. My mom and my sister were there to be the witnesses. And then we had our reception at the hoop at where the hoop. we met. We always wanted to use whatever platforms we had, uh, whether it's a job or connections, affiliations, to try to find a way to help it improve the lives of other people in some kind of way. We've been extremely fortunate and blessed in our lives. And, you know, like we want other people to be able to feel happiness and and have equity, like what Taste is trying to do. And just like be kind to people and try to uplift other people. Yeah. So uh, we've tried to be intentional about that in our marriage as much as we can. Mm-hmm. And that's how we got to the point of the show. We're here at Elevate today. I'm meeting with Jordan Bader, who is the president of Acme Construction, and then also Donnell Morgan, executive director. Uh, Jordan, not only is he the president of Acme Construction, but he is also the chair of the Elevate board. Elevate Oregon is a youth mentorship program based out of Northeast Portland. Uh, We're talking just about Elevate getting ready for the upcoming school year. What are some of the challenges? What are some of the obstacles? What are some of the things they need? And I didn't know that I was in for a special treat of hearing Donnell's story in depth. Uh, In the the early 90s, late 80s, um, I'm finished high school got a basketball scholarship and I'm on my way in, 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 in August, you know, September, I'm heading mm-hmm. to college. July, um, I'm hanging out with some friends that, you know, I've come up with. Um, a fight breaks out and just gunshots. All oh, hell is just breaking loose in this, in this party. People are just trying to get out of there. You know, the house is being shot up. I was able to make it to my car and when I got outside, it was just like a scene out of a movie, man. Like people shooting everywhere, ducking behind cars. It was insane. And I'll never forget that. And I'm 48 today. I was 18 years old when that happened. And still today I have trauma about that, Mm -hmm. you know, about I get to my car and as I'm going to start the car, I look because he tapped the window and I look and I'm looking right down the barrel of a gun. And um, I don't know what told me to turn that car on. And I turned it on and I drove as fast as I could and all I heard was shots, all I heard was pops. Uh, The back window does get hit and that was a a moment in my life where it it changed me forever. And if it didn't, I was gonna go one or two ways, either get deeper into the affiliation and go retaliate Mm -hmm. or say, you know, I need to get as far away from here as possible to try to change Uh, the trajectory of my life and that's what really put me on this path the whole thing is just I just wow I I didn't I didn't even know how to respond to him like I wanted to go give him a big hug because I felt like as he's saying it he's reliving all this stuff in his mind that to me highlights the point as well because he lived through as a kid stuff that the kids he's working with right now have to live through and I was a junior in college, so I was about 20 years old when I realized kids are always drawn to us because we're athletes. Mm-hmm. You're always going to schools to talk, you're doing basketball camps, after practice groups of kids come in and you're doing like little mini hoop type things and, and coaches would ask me to speak in front of kids. And I remember the first time the coach asked, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm not getting in front of you. No, no part of that. No, no, no part of that, that man. <laughs> he chose me, and I got up in front of the kids and delivered a message. And one thing I remembered is they were glued to everything I said. Mm. Whatever I said, mm. 
at that particular time they were going to do it yeah and that's yeah. when i realized there's a gift yeah mm. i had to realize that was the, the first gift. time that's the first time wow and basically I really took that experience and I always wanted to do it. I always wanted to talk in yeah. front of the kids. And I had my whole, I had notebooks set up, portfolios. Okay, I'm going to this school. And I called the school, hey, I'm the basketball player for, and I, oh, which, and I, I just volunteer and would love to come. And, and that's what I would do. I and would do all that. of that started from that moment of you realizing that kids would connect with you? That's it. That's, That's it, right. man. man I, ain't, I ain't know none of this. I thought I knew you. I didn't know this either. I didn't know none of this That's what I would do, man. The thing that makes Elevate Oregon so unique is not only are they a after-school mentorship program, but they're during the school, embedded within the Park Rural School District. So these kids are attached to these mentors. They call them teacher mentors. All throughout the school day, they have class with them. And then once school is out, those kids still get a chance to be involved with those teacher mentors. So they always feel like there's always a safe space. There's always an influence they can attach to. And that's really what separates Elevate and makes what they do really cool. The teacher mentors, uh, many of them, um, and I think this was, you know, I can't speak to this, but Donnell can. You know, many of them have come from this community and come from communities and, and situations that these kids are facing. To get individuals that have experienced that to come and teach in these classrooms, you know, is the only way to really connect. I can't connect like that. You know, uh, and, and I can show my love in another way. But to get these, these individuals that have been there and experienced it, critical. That some of the teacher mentors, yeah. they were students in our program. I love that. You know, yeah. and, and they, got to, they got to experience what this is all about. Yeah. Growing up for me, I had that where I had a mentor that was a part of every aspect of my life. And as a kid, I felt a lot more comfortable with that situation. I was able to open up to that adult uh, and that person was ultimately able to help steer my life and keep me on the right path. They are working with the lifestyle of these kids. Um, that for me blew me away. I, I get choked up just thinking about sure, it because yeah. you know that is really you know the magic yeah. for sure. So yeah, we, I'm in. You know that. <laughs> like you, yeah. we're gonna help them get it. Yeah, we're gonna help them get it. Will Lamar, I mean we. You know, we really appreciate you using your platform my to pleasure. expose us yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, open invite to be as involved or around as much as you can, because I know your time is limited. Um, but, you know, what we love and what we think is special about Elevate is really the classroom. And so yeah. we invite yeah. anytime anyone you think, you know, would, would benefit from this. Um, you know, to come to see what happens in the classroom because we are able to start opening these up soon. Yeah. Um, so to have people come in, you know, experience what I did, you yeah. know, and then yeah. be hooked for life. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I'll do that. Whenever the next one is, right. make sure I know. Yeah. I'm really excited for what's to come.